Good morning. So today is All Saints Sunday. Do you know what a saint is, Jesse? What's a saint? Yeah, Christian, worship God, trust God. Now, can you think of any saints? You are too good, Jesse. How about one by just Saint so and so? We're going to hear about Saint Luke from Saint Luke today, right? And Usually, we think of saints as people who've done something really big and impressive, like the apostles. They followed Jesus, and most of them gave their lives because of their faith, and they were really, really holy. So there are saints' days basically every day of the year. We could celebrate St. Timothy or St. Luke or St. Mark or any of those great saints. But they are saints because because God because God has blessed them. Right? That work? Well what about us? God has forgiven our sins. And so every day we wake up And we are, we're holy. Our sins are gone, and we have this wonderful potential laid out ahead of us. And every day, we too could do do great things for God. Now, they may not be great things that get written down in a book or put in a movie, but those things like a smile or being nice to Grandpa or helping your neighbor, or being honest, or even working hard. Any of those things that that come from our faith, they make a difference. And so we are, we are all saints. God has forgiven our sins, called us to go out and do, to do God's works. So today is our day. Today is All Saints Sunday. It's St. Jesse Sunday. It's St. Ariana Sunday. It is your Sunday. Because God has forgiven your sins and set you free. God has made you holy and given you holy work to do. Amen.
Our first reading this morning is taken from the seventh chapter of Daniel. The book of Daniel was written in the second century BCE, when the Syrian king Antiochus Epiphanes was severely persecuting the Jews. Daniel's vision of the four beasts proclaims that human kings will come and go, but the kingdom will ultimately belong to God and to God's people. The lesson reads, In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions in his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up in the great sea, and four great beasts came out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall rise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever, and ever. The word of the Lord. Our reading is Psalm 149. It is printed in your bulletin. We'll read responsively. Hallelujah! Sing to the Lord a new song. God's praise is the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their ruler. Let them praise their maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in the people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings and chains and their nobles with links of iron. To inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is the glory for all God's faithful ones. Hallelujah. Our second reading is taken from the first chapter of Ephesians. After giving thanks for the faith of the Ephesians, the writer of this letter prays that they might understand the wisdom, hope, and power of God that is embodied in Jesus Christ. The lesson reads, In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of Him, who accomplishes all things according to His counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that when the eyes of your heart are enlightened, you may know what what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. In echoes of the prophet Isaiah, In Mary's song of praise, Jesus reveals surprising things about who enjoys blessing and who endures woe. 
He invites his disciples to shower radical love, blessing, forgiveness, generosity, and trust, even on enemies and outsiders. The lesson begins. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise it's become my habit on All Saints Sunday to share the story of one or two people who have been saints in my life. I partly do that because I think it is important to think about how it is that we live out this holiness that God has given us, how it is that we can live out this blessing that Jesus describes in the Beatitudes. I also share these stories knowing that every one of you have a saint in your life, probably lots of them, people in your lives who have shared God's grace and God's goodness and God's love. And as I tell you about one of mine, I do that knowing that you can be preaching your own sermon in your own heads about those people who have been your saints, who have blessed you and loved you and shared the good news with you, those people who have taught you how to live lives of faith. Of course, like we mentioned in the children's sermon, there are all kinds of saints' days. Some days we have to add two or three because there's more saints than there are days in the year. And those folks usually are folks who have done great and magnificent things. Maybe they've died because of their faith, or maybe they have changed the world in ways that are made for TV movies. Whether it's one of the apostles or Jesus' mother or some monk that lived hundreds of years ago, those people often seem very different from us. But the people Jesus describes as being blessed, they sound a whole lot like us. People who are poor, people who are hungry, people who struggle and strive and survive, people who are sometimes hated and scorned because of their faith. Ordinary saints, people who are not perfect, not powerful, and people whose stories will never end up on a TV movie. 
but people who have lived their lives in faith, who have loved God and loved their neighbor, and in ways both big and small, done God's work in the world. Today, we celebrate ordinary saints. We celebrate all the saints. Earl was definitely an ordinary saint. Earl was my pastor growing up and my best friend's dad. He was an amazing preacher. He filled his story with sermons, with interesting stories and amazing analogies, often with the most groan-worthy of puns. But every Sunday, we came and we heard the good news of Jesus Christ in ways that seemed fresh and new, in ways that inspired people to live out that faith. Earl did indeed proclaim the grace and love of God powerfully, and he shared with us what that mercy of God meant and what it looked like, what it would mean for our lives. Now, Earl was far from perfect, and while I don't need to recount his failings here, even in those places where Earl missed the mark, his dependence on God's grace and mercy was a sermon in itself. Earl was saved by God's grace and by God's grace alone, and no one knew that more than he did. Earl would have loved Kent. Because if there were two things that Earl loved about the church, one of them was potlucks, and the other was being involved in the community. For years, Earl volunteered as a chaplain for the Colorado Springs Police Department. He rode along on most Friday nights in one of the patrol cars, and he would go to places where there was crisis, and he would share God's love and God's mercy in ways that were real and ways that were tangible. He was the one who most often informed families that a loved one had died. And if there was a dis domestic, a, a, I'm try that one again. If there was a domestic disturbance going on, it was his car that was sent to that home. Earl was instrumental in organizing a bunch of community ministries mental health services for the poor, hospice. And he was a part of developing one of the first ministries that dealt with hunger and poverty on the west side of Colorado Springs. Much like CFC, it was a food pantry, but more than that, it was a place of hope for folks that just didn't have much hope left. Earl was an ordinary saint. He loved John Denver. And I think he tried to make his life kind of like a John Denver song. Mountains, eagles, feather beds. Probably not. His sense of humor ran to dad jokes. And he had very poor taste in football teams. He was a Bears fan. And no, his private life didn't always live up to his public persona. But Earl, Earl wasn't saved by his sense of humor, nor was he blessed because he lived a life that was blameless. Earl was blessed by God's great love and grace. And Earl clung tightly to that, and he shared that same grace with his community and his congregation, and he shared that grace with me. I understand that in his last years, Earl was tormented by dementia, that he often wandered off, 
forgot names and forgot people, forgot where he was living. But he never forgot God's love. He would sing hymns and, yes, John Denver songs with his children. And even the very last pictures that I saw of him, he had that mischievous, ornery, maybe even naughty glint in his eye that spoke to me of a spirit that was still being filled with the Holy Spirit. Earl was definitely an ordinary saint, one of those people through whom God made a difference in so many people's lives. He lived his faith in God's grace, knowing better than most that it was by God's grace alone, but also knowing that that grace, that it was for everyone, and that it made a difference. Earl was an ordinary saint, but he was surely one of my saints. Who are yours? Who are the people that sparked that faith in you, who blessed you, inspired you, encouraged you? Who are the people that have taught you how to love and how to forgive, how how to make that faith that lives within you real in your everyday lives. Were they saintly saints or were they more ordinary saints? And of course, your homework for this week, whose saint are you? Who is looking at your life, hoping to see God's grace? hoping to understand God's mercy and God's love. Who is looking at your life wondering, how can I live a life of faith? Who? Who's saint? Who's ordinary, precious, and wonderful saint are you? Amen. I'm not going to pull it off because last week I threw it on the floor. The pulpit hymn today is number 427, and we will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. This morning we remember and honor those of our Kent Memorial family who have died since last All Saints Sunday. In their memory, we now reverently give thanks to God. Diane Reams, who passed from this life November 27, 2021. This rose of remembrance is placed on the altar. Charles Neiman, who passed from this life on March 4th, 2022. This rose of remembrance is placed on the altar. Surely. 
Billy Ham, who passed from this life on August 18th, 2022. This rose of remembrance is placed on the altar. <laughs> passed from this life on September 9th, 2022. This rose of remembrance is placed on the altar. We now also remember some of our loved ones and friends who have died during this past year. And in their memory, we now reverently give thanks to God and place a rose of remembrance on the altar. Georgie Ann, Jim Clements, Gloria Cundiff, Bob Foster, Steve Garner, Lois Gonseth, Catherine Hankins, Jerry Hawk, Steve Hoskins, Tom Howley, Jean Killian, Lee Oster, Peggy Prock, Ted Turner. Thank you. 